Tony from CassetteComeback.com So in today's video we're going to look at a couple of cassettes that are quite visible at the moment they're cropping up a lot in forums and on Facebook groups basically because one is brand new and the other one is cheap so which cassettes are they well if you looked at the title you know what they are but they are the Gallon Optimal UR and the Maxell XV now I've looked at these before I mentioned them in other videos but uh, I thought it was maybe time to do a proper test and refresh on them so everyone can have a see what they're all about so let's uh, take one of these out because these are only available as five packs and uh, yeah this is how mine turned up mm. a bit stuck let's just uh, see if I can get one out oh that lovely squeak there we go right so Gallon Optimal and Maxell XV now these ones as you can see here bing are available on Amazon Co UK and they're also available directly from the manufacturer bing but as you can see that they're working at around three pounds a cassette so you know that's still more expensive than you can get URs for however the uh, Max LX V if you are in the UK you can get these direct from Richie Sound's website for as it says on the pack two pounds for five so plus two pound ninety nine shipping yeah I know a lot of you outside of the UK are lamenting the fact that you can't hoard several hundred of these uh, because they don't ship them outside of the UK but um, here we go that's what they look like so the actual XV here is well if we look at it this shell and the hubs looks very familiar don't they yeah this this looks like a, a last of line Pangong UR it's the same shell the same hubs is it the same tape probably I can't see them doing a special XV formulation but it doesn't matter is it any good now there are actually three versions of this cassette as far as I can see they used to be sold in a 10 pack and that's quite rare to find and the 10 packs from what I've found have racks main cassettes in them different shell different hubs definitely a racks and then you can also get these as I've featured them in a separate video about Saihan cassettes because there is a Saihan version of this but the ones that seem to be coming from Richie Sounds right now are this, which is a Pangung version. And like I say, the, I rate the, the Pangung UR. It's a very decent, normal cassette. And with these working out, you know, if you bought five packs of these for £10 and you paid £2.99 shipping, you're getting 25 Maxell cassettes, brand new, for 13 quid shipped to your door. You cannot whack that. Now these are an unknown and the fact that they're calling them UR is a bit mm. I mean they are obviously designed for the German market because all, all the writing is in German ideal for the Taglische Aufnahme yep hi-fi album cassette and you know apart from that it doesn't really say much else we've got a range of stickers fairly yeah J card it does what it says I suppose the cassette itself with the printing on there and that, it, it looks like a duplicator cassette doesn't it it does it looks like a duplicator cassette it doesn't actually say anywhere where it's made but uh, uh yeah uh, i'm gonna guess it's probably china where else would it be and like i said the ur uh, sorry you are haha <laughs> the xv just uh, another Fairly monkey J card, very similar sort of cases actually. These two, very similar cases. No, are they the same? They're very similar if they're not the same cases. These, but uh, yeah, just uh, usual Maxell stickers on them. Let's have a look at the back of this to see what it says. You know, it says it's good for voices and lectures and portables and. Car stereo systems, doesn't mention hi fi, but yeah, you know, this is the English one. Now, I believe, look, especially looking at this style of sticker, that uh, these actually were made for a, a discount chain in the UK called Pound Stretcher. 
and uh, they were sold uh, I think pretty much universally in there because I, I seem to remember them back in the day and this would be around the early noughties you know early to mid noughties so yeah so like I said these are in the news a bit because they're cheap these because they're new so fairly innocuous looking cassettes but let's fire up a deck have a listen see if they're any good I'm going to use an old friend for this one. I know this deck has its fans and I haven't used it for a while but I still love this deck. It's uh, no one I'll ever get rid of. My Iowa ADS950 because well how can I put this? Um, these are sort of average cheap tapes so I'm not going to put these into a ZX9 which pretty much makes anything sound wonderful. Let's let's give this a real world test. Let's test it in a, a good normal deck yeah that's what i'm going to do so let's have a look at the gallon optimal first uh let's have a look at the tape on this it's uh it's a it's a nice looking tape actually it's it's brown it's shiny it's a bit see-through but it's it's brown and shiny nicely calendared yeah it doesn't look too bad right let's have a see how the old calibration goes and just to uh, remind you this deck is set up to be calibrated to SA so uh, Dolby and R off let's get it calibrated up and see how it does oh dear next to no bias and next to no level oh dear it looks like we got a type zero anyway let's see what we can do let's turn the record sensitivity all the way up okay let's turn the bias all the way down oh way up hey up we've got something now ah there we go all right okay so let's just uh try that again we're nearly there so turn the right side oh that's a little there let's go all over the place this this is bizarre but anyway well Actually, to be fair, that's that's better than I thought it was going to be. We're, we're it's a bit over again. Let's just turn the record sensitivity down a bit. It's over bias. This. Let's. Uh... Oh, okay, okay. I think I think that's about as good as we're going to get it. If we look, you know, off off centre, um, we've got basically the bias crank nearly all the way down, and the record sensitivity all the way up. But oh, oh, it's dropped. You see this isn't stable this is all over the shop isn't it let's be honest here this isn't what we call a stable tape but we're nearly there so uh let's have a see so i'm going to play something from the youtube audio library now and it's called marigold and it's a little piano song not my usual dance or electronic bit of piano let's see how it does it real world and maybe just maybe if it's not sounding too great, I'll, I'll put Dolby S on and see how it handles that. Um, yeah. Okay, the Gallon Optimal. Let's have a listen. Seem to have lost the left channel.
yeah it's 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 Chinese um, it's not quite horrific as some but let's be honest the levels on the left were down um, I don't know if it was distortion or dropouts but put it this way this is not the quality cassette you're looking for uh, I'd take a regular UR over this or any of the newly manufactured cassettes or would I take the cheaper I mean literally you can buy five of these for the price of one gallon optimal if you're in the UK and still have change is this a better cassette so let's uh, calibrate this one up now and see how it compares to the gallon optimal oh look at that it's yeah let's let's set these to zero and start from zero okay right yeah so yeah it's a bit down on level so if we just crank the level up There we go, crank the level, just a smidge of positive, add a bit of bias, look at that. See, that's that's pretty stable, that is, and that didn't actually take all that much tweaking, just, like I say, crank the level up a bit. Uh, the bias is near the centre, so looking good so far. So let's play Marigold again and see how it does. And again, I might flip Dolby S on at some point, just, just to give them a fighting chance. Forty two pence for this cassette right now. Brilliant. That sounded really good. That sounded as good as any entry level ferric I've ever run through this deck. And in fact with Dolby S on, even though it was peaking at plus two, which is higher than the Dolby level on this deck, still sounded good. It took it well. Uh, I mean yeah, it's hissy. But so <laughs> most entry level ferrics, but uh yeah, I mean for what these cost right now, you should uh, really go and get some if you're in the UK because I don't think you can spend about a 42p on a cassette as opposed to spending three euros on this one. Uh. The truth. So I'm really annoyed at Richard Sounds for selling these. 
I really am because this is not a common cassette. I think they were just for the UK. Um, it's as simple as that. I've never seen them really for sale anywhere else, only in the UK and the branding on the labels from Poundland says so. I mean, I'm sure someone will say, no, no, we sold them in our country as well, because you know, you obviously can't be left out. You must say you sold them in your country. But um, they're an uncommon cassette. As we've seen there, these ones perform really well. And I had a load in stock which was selling nicely at £20 for five before Richard Sound came and did them at £2 for five. So it's basically wiped out all of my stock. But my sell of don't shed a tear for me, and I'm sure many of you won't. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, if you're in the UK, Richard Sounds, get, get yourself, and they only like to buy five at once, because obviously if not, um, they'll be all over eBay, which... <laughs> to be fair, they are already all over eBay. I've seen some like this auction here. It's funny, Bing, where they've uh, tried to blob out the two pounds. And uh, that's sort of the reason why uh, the cassette prices are going up all the time. I've had this talk on a certain forum. I put my two penneth in. Um, yeah. And basically because cassettes now have transcended being this niche market thing that no one cares about. All the... Cassettes are coming back articles, and I mean, heck, I, I was on BBC Radio. If you go to mixcloud.com forward slash the Retro Nouveau, I was asked on radio about why cassettes are coming back and stuff. And so these have now transcended into the realms of the vintage rare people, the people that, you know, were selling Clarice Cliff plates and old video games and old action figures, basically anything they could pick up in charity shops, thrift stores, car boot sales for cheap and make a few quid on. Cassettes have come onto their radar now, and so now the price is going up because people are fighting for these to sell them on. So, um, yeah, that's why cassette prices are going up, unfortunately. And like I say, these now are all over eBay at more than what you paid for them at Richer Sounds. But go to Richer Sounds, get yourself five for 13 quid shipped. So you're gonna get 25 cassettes for 13 quid shipped. And as we heard, they're very decent. They are. They're, they're basically, I think, the last of line you are. And even them now have gone up. I mean, the usual pricing we're looking at for them is... You know, they go, you'd be lucky to get them for less than £2 each to your door. Put it that way. And it never used to be like that. These, these are just people trying to cash in on the tape boom. Oh, cassettes are popular. Wow, there's someone on Alibaba that can sell cassettes. Here's what I want it to look like. Oh, put you are on. People know what you are are. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll make some quick money on these at three pounds as cassette. You know, this is something if you wanted to buy them on Alibaba in bulk. I know because I've looked and I just couldn't spend money on crap like this. Um, they're costing you ten and twenty pence in your hand after you paid all the shipping and taxes. So three euros is a nice markup. Uh, like I say, get yourself some Max LXVs, get yourself some old URs, get yourself any you know, get some splicing captures or whatever. Don't buy these. They're, they're, they're not good. They're, they're basically voice level at best, but no, distortion, dropouts. No, these are not something I would call a quality cassette. And you could see that simply by the way that the calibration needed so much level and so much bias taken off to get anywhere with it. Yeah, really poor quality. But all the same, I'd like to thank Big Kel for sending me this because he took one for the team here because everyone was wondering. He went, oh, I bought some and he sent me one. So thanks, Kelvin. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, so hopefully this is a warning. If you see them, you, you really don't want to buy any. But if you're in the UK, yeah, get yourself some of these. I, I don't like, say, hoard them, but I reckon if it's richer sounds, they've found a warehouse full of these or they've found pallets of them so they're not going anywhere soon so maybe these cassettes alone might have a positive uh, reaction on cassette prices in the UK it might come down in price if enough people know to buy these from Richard Sounds and not from the guys on eBay who are trying to sell them for, for a lot more than than what they paid for them. Nice, lazy eBay flipping. That's eBay flipping, that's lazy. Click on website A, deliver to door, take pictures, sell on website B. That's flipping, that's not someone that's trawling through warehouses or driving here, there and everywhere to collect tapes. They deserve to make a bit of a bargain. Uh, bargain, a bit of a margin, I should say. <clears throat> like me, but yeah. 
get some of these if you're in the UK avoid these worldwide so uh, thanks for watching hope that was useful please like and subscribe until the next video I'll see you later bye bye